As the title says, these are home movies made by with on for the Esmes starting in 1949. The first few were made on borrowed cameras back when uh, movie cameras and the film were relatively very expensive. Eventually, we got our own camera. So we will start with the first one we have, 1949. Here we are in Woonsocket, South Dakota, Christmas 1949. Joel is one year and two months old. We're visiting at my parents' home, Grandpa John and Bambi. Joel loved, we'd hum and he would, this was his dance, going in a circle or jiggling up and down. He was very conscious of music. I think the little red wagon was a gift to him that Christmas. This little guy was my folks' first grandchild, so he was kind of the center of the stage. We had borrowed this project or this camera from a friend, and so it was kind of a novelty to us, and Joel especially. He wants to go over and grab it. That young guy there is his father. Yeah, it was one of those old-fashioned ones that had a big bar of lights. This was one of his favorite play things to do with his dad. Notice how he smiles all the time? There's my dad, Grandpa John. Pretty soon you'll get a good look of his red plaid shirt and his yellow and brown striped tie. That, that young kid there is uh, Joel's mother trying to pretty him up for the picture. He had very blonde hair. You'll have to watch him pound here. He hits his finger. We're trying to make him pound with his right hand. We weren't aware then wow, that he is left-handed. No more of that. Watch this a hammer this time. He's going to hit my mother. <laughs> is uh, Joel's great-grandpa, Burton Culver, my mother's father. We always thought he kind of looked like Winston Churchill, and we had a figurine of old Churchill, and that thing that Joel's playing with is the figurine. And Joel thought it was a nice doll. He would hug it and cuddle it and call it baby. You can see him saying baby, baby. It was an old plaster Paris figurine. Great resemblance to Grandpa. There's a four-generation span. Now you can see my dad's striped tie and his plaid shirt. Boy, fuzzy banky, fuzzy, fuzzy banky. Anything fuzzy in that thumb would go to his mouth. And I think this was this blanket was a gift from uh, Don's folks. It has I. It said I S for Iowa State, and down in the corner, his name is embroidered. Well, here we are uh, in Huron, South Dakota. This is the summer of 1950. My brother Claire is coming in, and the whole family is waiting for him. I think it must have been uh, 4th of July. There he is, swinging his arms. 
pretty soon there goes mother with <laughs> carrying Joel. There's all of, uh, the whole culver. My brother is overwhelmed. He hasn't seen some of these people in years. They're all there. Those two women were cousins of mothers from southwest Minnesota, Olivia. I didn't know them either. There's Yvonne, there's Mother Joel, Uncle George, Hazel, and Jeannie. Uh, Joel, there's Aunt Ollie, my dad. There's, um, who's that? I can see Maxine. There's my dad. And we must have had a picnic uh, out at the fairgrounds in Huron. That's Mother there in the blue dress. And here's a p picture of Grandpa Burton Culver, great grandpa. He's the patriarch of the whole schmo. Then we had a ball game. That's Maxine. Missed. Oh! There's Mother Ruth Bevere. There goes my dad. He got a hit. He's limping out to first. Grandpa, there's my brother. Cheapers, he looks young. <laughs> He liked little old Joel. There's mother, good picture. Now we're back at Woonsocket, and Grandpa lived with my parents the last few years. There I am, very pregnant. Always seem to be. <laughs> yeah, with Julie. There's dear brother helping Grandpa. I don't know. Joel, you know, this old lefty here is trying to open the trunk. He's finally got the hang of that left hand. Well, I can try it again. I think you can get it this time. Yeah, yeah. Don't know who that was. Must have been another bright, hot day. This is... Well, where are we? Mm -hmm. Now I'm hanging up the clothes at wound socket at my folks' backyard. There's the old barn. It's, st it's still there on North Wound Socket. This little lamb wanted to get up to Joel. There's Faye. Janice is holding Joel. And the girls had their hands full. There's Grandpa Ernie. They were trying to hold on to that kid. We're out in the barnyard now, and the men had been shooting pigeons inside the barn. Here they come. Faye isn't afraid to hold the dead carcass. And there's Grandpa Ernie, I believe. Here are some more scenes of 1950. That's Janice and Faye pushing J Joel around. We think that we're having a big family picnic in Mitchell, South Dakota at Hitchcock Park. You'll see Jerry and I'm not getting any thinner. Wow, looks like we had ear corn. Uh, Don's mom and dad are there. That's Bus Palmer talking to my brother, I believe. Oh, and that little car was so popular, it was brought by Bus Palmer's kids. But Joel monopolized it, just loved it. See his big old plastic bib? It must have been hot. This is uh, the beautiful flower beds out in this park there at Mitchell. That's my mother and Don's mother and Mrs. Palmer. That was uh, Jessie, Don's mother, smelling the flowers.
They never knew that four, yeah, that's Jesse, uh-huh, that uh, that was 50, 43 years later, we're looking at it. This is Jerry, I don't know what the heck he's feeding Joel, but he didn't get poisoned, I guess. A lot of people picnic in this park because they had a lot of beautiful trees and it was the days when it was so hot and dry. I think Joel's sitting on the potty chair. He's a golfer too. Oh, lefty, you haven't got it on the right side. He gets frustrated. We hadn't caught on to this yet. There's the old Buzzy Bee. I remember that thing he'd pull and it would clatter in a car. That was his two toys, period. Here, Don's going to try and show him how to pitch. And we didn't realize that he was left-handed. And see, he's putting it in the wrong hand. The poor little guy gets so frustrated. See, he's trying to throw with that mitt hand. So he cries. He <laughs> can't do it right. Okay, give her another try. See, now he's going to throw his mitt. Oh, fiddle. Give up. This old carp was what my dad would carry the milk on, uh, on the farm there. And our kids had more fun with it, even after, long after Joel got older. Our other kids loved that old carp. He could put two cream cans in that and pull it to the house to be milked, or where did he milk? Yeah, he milked in the basement, I believe. My dad's out there working on some machine by the corn crib. Joel's going to help. And he's carrying a big old can of water or grease or something. This is the reception that uh, mother and dad hosted in 1951, and it was a Swanson reunion with all of the Swanson kids. My dad was the only boy, and he had four sisters, and they, the five of them had not been together, I think, since before they were married, so it was probably 50 years, and it was such a wonderful occasion. Aunt Dora was from Portland, Aunt Jessie was from Newton, Iowa, Aunt Clara was from Denver, and uh, who did I leave out? Oh, Aunt Lizzie was from Chicago. And here's the guests coming. This lady is called Ina Peterson, and there's Aunt Clara with Lily Zimmerman. There's Aunt Jessie. And there's John Maurer, an old boyfriend of, <laughs> I think of uh, Lizzie's. That's Aunt Dora and Aunt Clara side by side. This is another Otto Zimmerman. Old neighbors from out there north of Forsberg where Dad was raised. There's a Bonnie girl. And there was a Bonnie man sitting down. And the funny part of it is, I remember them telling stories that all these girls <laughs> went with some of these men. Their mo Bonnie. mother was lighting the candles there. Oh, uh, Bonnie's, we, through the Esmes, are distantly related. There's Arthur Hollander, Otto Zimmerman. Every, there's Kitty Bortel. She's lived in uh, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, and she came up for it. And she is my father's first cousin. There's Julie. This is probably the first movies of Julie. There's Jerry. It looks like she's just starting to do a little walking. She is not quite a year old yet, and there's her Grandpa Ernie pulling her in the wagon. She had a little red corduroy cowboy suit that was used by Janice or Faye, and also I had made it over for Joel and put pants for him. 
but it was passed down to all her kids, I know. And that pony, that little horse was a gift from uh, Grandpa Ernie, wasn't it, Don? And and Aunt Jessie, and they gave it to us that November so that we could take it home. The kids could have it for, it was supposed to be a Christmas present. Gee, I see Julie even has a ribbon in her hair. And she has a panda bear. That must have been from Grandpa and Grandma. And they must have brought the horse for Joel. We are often wondered, where in the world did all of us sleep? There was no hotels or anything. I suppose Mother and Dad had neighbors lined up. But they only had a three-bedroom house. Now, that's, that's the Esme family. That's Don's Grandma Jessie holding Joel. And there's Grandpa Ernie holding. No, she was holding. Ah, no. There's the Swansons. That's my side. And my dad, huh, with the heads cut off. Yeah. <laughs> dad is bouncing Julie. Joel is really happy there, isn't he? <laughs> That's Amoy Ingle and Aunt Dora. These are still scenes from uh, the reunion. That's Mrs. Webb, Ernie's mother, who lived in Woonsocket. This is still 1951 at the Swanson reunion. Pretty good one of you, Joel. Now here's the three men, my dad and Francis Walker and Don's father, Ernie, and they're all going to stick out their dentures. There's dad, and they're all giggling so they can hardly do it. But we had so much fun watching those goofy men. It was a, a real happy time. Everybody was having fun. That's Aunt Lizzie with the blue bouquet. Now watch this flower. There's Aunt Clara. There's Kitty. She's got the flower. There's my mother and my dad with Joel. That's Aunt Jessie. Jerry. That uh, was Aunt Dora from Portland sitting next to Kitty. Guess who? My better half. Sure doesn't look like that now. <laughs> There's Grandpa Ernie. And Kitty is playing with Joel. He was quite a center of attraction. There's Uncle Francis Walker, Lizzie's husband. Still wonder where in the world all those people stayed. There's Jesse, Don's mother, and Kitty. They were a lot alike. They had a lot of fun together. And I remember uh, Jesse and Ernie brought all that steak and oh, all the good meat. There, did you see the flower is on Jesse now. Now my dad, they're trying to get a nice picture and my dad's <laughs> spoiling it all the time. <laughs> he wouldn't leave him alone. <laughs> Wants the bald spot to show and test pest. Oh, oh yeah. That they that really was the truth. They used to uh, mistake my dad for Don's dad. They said they looked alike and call them the twins, call them the brothers and of course they were all both of them are so insulted, huh? Francis. Yeah, look at his teeth. <laughs> there goes the flower. Clara is putting it on Jesse. They had more fun with that dumb corsage. <laughs> That's my Aunt Jessie. She's a pretty lady. Ernie. There's Aunt Clara. Aunt Dora back there. And Aunt Jessie kept going around with that bowl of oranges or apples or something trying to get rid of them. Nobody would eat them. That was on top of the piano. Our wedding picture, and me, and uh, Julie's baby picture, and that was my brother. Oh, Joel was on that. That's Bus Palmer playing with Joel, and oh, he just loved that man. Bus was good with kids. There's my mother. Now here comes the, the flower again. <laughs> 
now she's got it. That's Aunt Dora. They had good visits, good times, and they were just cutting up the whole time. There they put the darn flower on Aunt Jessie's head. Well, this is Christmas of 1951, and we're at Uncle Lloyd's and Aunt Hazel's over at Iroquois. My family, and uh, that's Uncle Lloyd and Dad. And we had Christmas dinner with them. I'm not sure it's Christmas Day, but we must have gone over there. And, of course, the men were having their usual game of Somerset. The Culver's and the Swansons never got together without Somerset. There's my brother. He was home. That was Aunt Hazel behind him. On the piano was a picture of Donnie, and he was in service. He didn't get home. That's Les and Ruth's wedding. There's Lejeune. There's Colleen. Les and Ruth's wedding picture. There's my mother and Aunt Hazel. They're looking at pictures or something. Now we are having a session of music. Julie is dancing and Joel is playing the mouth organ. And Joel, as I told you before, always went in circles when he would dance. There he is, boy. He's really playing and dancing up a storm. And he thought sisters get a little more attention than he, so he got in front of the camera, in front of the sister. Here he goes. Wind her up. <laughs> Julie, still a dancing, but big brother bonged her out of the way. Oh, leave me alone. That's Uncle Bud, or Cousin Bud. Mm -hmm. There was a flash of Uncle Lloyd right there. That's Ruth's mother, Ina Bevere. There's Ruth. And my dad. Boy, they're taking, they take their Somerset games very serious. I guess Dad and uh, Bud and Uncle Lloyd and who's, oh, and my brother. That was the foursome. Here's mother and daughter and mother and son. <coughs> little old Julie and little old Joel. Julie's yeah, Julie must have had an accident because I see mother is sewing up her cords. That was, I made the kids clothes. That was a pair that I made. It was red corduroy. Now we're back at Woonsocket and Uncle Louie got a rude awakening. I think he wanted to kill those kids, but now look what he got. He ended up with three of his own. <laughs> that little wet butt was right by his nose. Chickling the pillow right beside him. Now Julie's out there playing with her toys. Remember how I always tell you to write in your books? See, I started a long time ago doing that. Who they're from and when and why. Okay, we're in Munster, Indiana, after Don got his job at Standard Oil. This is a, re a dance recital of uh, Julie and Joel's. Julie must have been about five years old, and Joel must have been about seven. Their teacher was, was Dottie Brannon. She was a friend of ours. Her husband also worked at Standard Oil. And we knew him at uh, Ames. Uh, yeah, that's right. The, uh, Dottie's husband and Don graduated together. Julie is in this one. I think she's the second from the right. Oh, 
<laughs> I always remember their teacher was back in there off to the side dancing every step with them. And they didn't pay any attention to her. There's Joel in the middle there. Oh, that's better. Josh, do you think you look better than that now? Did you say this was 1955? No movies in between? Yeah. These are shots that we must have taken out in front of our house there in Munster, Indiana. This is in front of the front door, looking over at Al and Mary Sable's house. That's her house. It was a story and a half, two, three bedroom, basement. A nice neighborhood. Here comes our crew. And here's about the first pictures we ever took of John. <laughs> I'm not sure what his uniform is. That was a gal across the street. John, Sister Julie, they're standing back of our Dodge that we bought new in 1950, 50, 50. 50. 51, 1950, yeah. Mary Ellen Cronkey and Margaret Cronkey across the street. <coughs> Janice and Faye at our first home in Coon Rapids, the home that we rented down the line here off East River Road, the Lokensgard house, 1956. Zelda and the two girls came. And this was just before the, well, let's see. No, the twins are born the next year. Here we are at the old clay hole, which is no longer used. They say it's polluted. But boy, it was sure a popular place Back in those days, I think most all our kids took lessons there. Here's all our kids with Faye, Joel, Julie. This is Janice. Looks a little bored, doesn't she? <coughs> Here's Zelda with her old box camera. thing I remember about these girls when they came they had a great big trunk and I swear when Zelda opened that trunk the door just flew up it was so full of these big old crinoline skirts each of them had about seven or eight and they just went boing <laughs> see how the door is off center of that arch on the roof. Nobody realized that until I painted it in a, a winter scene I made. And then I finally realized, hey, that door isn't in the middle. Well, these are scenes that the house that we rented there at Lokensgard out 
That was on 94th Avenue, just above the 610 Bridge now, north of it, or west. Our three little rapscallions played in the yard. We didn't have to worry about traffic. There just weren't any out there. Now, I think we're at Twin Lakes having a picnic with the Herb and Phil Schroeder family. Of course, Joel is playing like he's Tarzan. Here's all the Esmes and the Schroeders. And now we've got six and they've got three, and I think there's only two of theirs there, Paul and Carol. We have Joel, Julie, John. He had a lot of fun that day. That's right off of Highway 100. There's the two fathers. Don is fanning the fire, really. Herb is supervising. <laughs> yeah, like Don says, man, look at those slender young men. There's Herb and Phil and their little kids. They look younger. So do we. Look at the kids, how little they look. Now we're with the Mel and Georgia Jenicky family out on Lake, uh, Lake what? Waconia. Waconia. <coughs> this was their boat. And they have two daughters. Jackie and Jeannie. Well, here we are having a picnic with the Jenikis. And I think this was over at Lake Waconia again where we went fishing. This is still the summer of 56, our first summer in Coon Rapids. We live next door to Mellon, Georgia. In fact, their uh, father owned the house that we rented. Here come the mighty fishermen. They probably are going down to the Mississippi River. We didn't live very far. They were going. They were going. Probably opening day. And uh, we, we were walking distance from the Mississippi. <laughs> Julie lost her hat. Good old brother Joel. This is out in our yard. There's my clothesline. The mosquitoes were so bad that year. There's the usual catch. Carp. Carp. This is the breezeway in our rented home and we made it into a playroom and the children played out there. They're, oh, they're playing with toads. You'll see something jumping around there in a bit. Now uh, watch this. Don says, no wonder John and all the kids act like they do when the camera's around. Ha! There's three muskrat tears. I'd like to see all three of them get in the tub now. Ah. Here they're all getting their horsey back rides before they bed down.
Well, they're saying their prayers here. Every night they do it around the coffee table. That airport is. I have no idea. I think it must be down here, but you know that? Greek. 37 years ago. This is an airport somewhere, but darn if we can figure it out. Oh, it is. The Minneapolis Ho Airport. Because it's Curtis Hotel. Boy, it is old. Yeah. Don says there's no jets yet. We're back now in Coon Rapids at the Clay Hole. Julie's trying to <laughs> Julie's trying to force John to have fun and he is not too obliging. The mighty swimmer Julie Always hamming it up, huh? Here's John coming out of the water. He is not happy. I suppose somebody splashed on him. He is not happy. <laughs> okay, we stopped in Jackson, Minnesota to see the Swens Roods. And their kids, Sylvia and their son, Bruce, and what's the other one? Carolyn. Oh, we were headed west to South Dakota. And there's Bruce Swensrud, who now lives here in Minneapolis. What's that golf course he lives on the edge of? Uh, uh, Hazelton. Hazelton. Yeah. He lives on the edge of Hazelton Airport. There's uh, Carol Swensrud with the kids. Looks like we're at a lake there, doesn't it? Is that a dog or a cat? Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, we're back in South Dakota. There's my father sticking out his dentures and cousin Bob Culver. That's his son. There's his daughter, Junie, and the first one was his son, Jerry. This is out at his farm. There, there's Doris with, I guess it must be Artis, their baby. Julie Beth. We're still on the summer of 1956, and we're at Woonsocket. That's Ernie and Mabel. Apparently, they're babysitting with little Deborah, their granddaughter. Uncle Ernie and Auntie May. They're sure nervous grandchildren. Over and hurt herself. His mother and Mabel are two sisters. <laughs> I 
I think Mabel's camera is shy. <laughs> Mabel's camera is shy. That's Uncle Ernest. Julie, Joel, and Deborah. Apparently, the folks had a cat. Julie, why don't you share that kitty? And my dad's trying to, <laughs> trying to hide behind the bushes. There Julie's after him. There's Grandpa Ernest helping his little granddaughter push John. Mother and Ernie. Seems like the wind is blowing all the time out there. Debbie. Debbie Johnson. Now we're in Huron and we're having a picnic. And it's very poor pictures, so we'll probably just skip it. Okay, here's Andy May, Hazel. I believe that's Sally. Mother, look at the wind blow. All these are family. Aunt Edith, uh huh. in Draper, South Dakota at the Ted Dowling home. There's Jean. Chuck Dowling. There's Uncle Ted and Jerry. There's Aunt Clara and Mary Dowling. We were certainly getting enough to eat. There's Burley and Leona from Montana and apparently we had gathered out there because they were there. Don't know who that lady is. Oh. Dorothy Gallimore. And all her chickens. And that's Keith, her husband. Sharon. Sharon. Janice May and Sharon Dowling. There are the Lingshites, Mr. and Mrs. Lingshite. There's Ralph Lingshite. So there we are, feeding our faces. Huh? Dorothy and Don. There's Keith. Joel. Zelda. Crammed a lot of people in that little house. There's Uncle Burley. Now we're in Coon Rapids, and we're about to go to a parade. Guess who that little girl on the left is? This is Julie. She apparently pushed her stroller. There's that pretty girl in the car, convertible. And here's son Joel with his jazzy vehicle. Jeannie Jenicky in the long black. They used to live next door to us. Don't know who the princesses are. Thank 
<laughs> I remember Julie just laughing up a storm at this clown hoppity hopping alongside her. Julie apparently got a prize. And Joel, I don't, he's just tipping his hat. And I don't think John got any. And right after that, John really got his nose bent out of shape, starting right about there. And we decided afterwards it was because maybe he didn't get, didn't get a prize. <laughs> but he'd had it. This is still 56, isn't it? Still 1956. We're out in Denver. That, uh, I'm out in Denver. I uh, rode out there with Ernie and this little Debbie, because Lorraine was sick. And I took these pictures of the twins with their sister Debbie. There's Deanie. That's Lorraine and Howard's family. Deb, Dean, and the twins, Joanne and Judy. The big kids were sure glad to see Debbie because uh, she'd been gone quite a while out in Dakota. Grandpa Ernie and um, Annie May, uh, Grandma Maybelle had had her. And so I rode back with Ernie and brought her back. Ernie, uh, Lorraine wasn't feeling good. Now we're at the airport in Huron. And Ollie and George met us, and uh, Lorraine and I flew in there, and her mother and Ollie and George were there to meet us. I guess that's the deal. All the way. <laughs> Don reminded me that I vomited all the way. Now we're out in Draper at Don's father's place. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Notice our kids got big boots. See, John's got boots bigger than his body. The gumbo was so bad, and we didn't bring our boots. We didn't know. And so we had to use Grandpa's boots, and everybody had boots that could hardly walk. Here comes Wayne and Margie in their little tribe. Janice. There's Vicky. Yeah. There's Wayne. And I suppose Wayne Jr. This was uh, the Draper Centennial. Whatever. And uh, all the men grew beards. Here's uh, Freddy. Uncle Fred. He's got a beautiful beard, right? Little Wayne is me. Oh, <laughs> well, it's only the 50th anniversary. Here comes Eldon Esme. Guess we were having a picnic out of Ernie. And Eldon's father, uh, Charlie. And here's uh, Louise and Morris. <laughs> that camera sure scared them all off. <laughs> they act like it was an explosion. There's their daughter, Phyllis Ann. And Oh, yeah, Charlie's daughter. That's Uncle Burley from Montana, boy, the pistol-packing six-shooter. Here's Uncle Ted. He's got a pretty good white beard. Here's the king of the beards. He got prize for the best, and that's Delmer Styles. And Anne's son-in-law. And here's Rosalie. There's... Some of the bearded men. Delmer's was a real pretty beard. He had kind of a little reddish cast to it.
back out at Draper at the 50 Golden Parade. That's Zelda and her girls. There's Margie Esme, her daughter Vicki. That's Zelda and Janice. <laughs> There's Wayne and Margie Esme. Handsome couple. Joel and S Julie Beth. You know, he and John both were kind of moody. Yeah. Whoop! I'm seeing that. <laughs> Here's the parade. I think that's Delmer Stiles, the king of the beards. For a tiny little town, they went to a lot of work, did a good job. You see the guy on the fiddle? See the guy on the camera? How about that old tractor? Don thinks that might be Uncle Ted. Here's the hearse. I don't think there was any dead bodies in it. That is Burley Spears, Uncle Burley. His six-shooter isn't showing, but he had it. Here's all our kids. Adolph Vick, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was from Myrtle, wasn't he? We think this is uh, Ernie driving this red truck, the Methodist Church. Yeah, that's, I think so. Oh, it wasn't the Methodist Church. bet all our gals are on that float it looked like Janice and there. they went over to Eldon Esme there and gave him a nickel or something he was dressed as an old bum <laughs> 